Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'd like to welcome you to another episode of our series, The Best in Islam. As in the previous episodes, we'll be looking at what Allah and His Messenger have declared for us to be the best. The best in our actions, the best people, the best in our interactions, our society, and elements of the world in which we live. In this episode, in particular, we'll be looking at the best in business. So much of our lives are connected to business, business whether we're buying, selling, trading, exchanging. This plays a big part of our lives. So with regards to business and how business should be conducted, Allah most great and glorious said in Surah Al-Isra, 17th chapter, verse 35, وَأَوْفُوا الْكَيْلَ إِذَا كِلْتُمْ وَزِنُوا بِالْقِسْطَاسِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ وَأَحْسَنُ تَأْوِيلًا Give full measure when you measure and weigh with an accurate balance. That is good and better in the end. Give full measure when you measure. Meaning that when you are engaged in the selling of your product, you should give people what they're paying for. Don't cheat them in one way or another. On one occasion, Prophet Muhammad, may God's peace and blessing be upon him, he had entered into the marketplace and a man had a pile of grain that he was selling. And the Prophet stuck his hand into the middle of that pile and he took out some wet grain. And he asked him, what is this? The man said the rain fell on it during the night. So the Prophet, may God's peace and blessing be upon him, said, so you should have left it as it was so people will know that it was wet grain. Rather than covering it with dry grain, so people think that they're buying dry grain, but in fact, what you are putting on the scale is wet grain covered by some dry grain. And of course, wet grain will weigh more than the dry grain. So what are you doing? You're cheating them. And that's why Allah said, give full measure when you measure and weigh with an accurate balance. Now, some people in the marketplace will play with the balance. They don't start from quite zero. Or it's not giving you an accurate measurement. Yeah, they're putting it on the scale. You're looking at the scale and you're thinking you're getting what you're paying for. But in fact, you're getting less than what you're paying for. These are the tricks of the trade. And this whole area of business in fact, it's a very dangerous area because people are quick to find loopholes, find ways to increase their profits at any cost. It is so common that the Prophet, may God's peace and blessing be upon him, described traders in general, saying, at tujjar humul fujjar. The traders, the business people in the marketplace, they are the most corrupt. The most corrupt element of any society. Because of the temptation to cheat. When people study marketing, and this is the tool used by the traders, the business people, marketing is basically focused on deception. The best salesman, who is the best salesman? When you ask those who are in that field, they will say the best salesman is the one who is able to sell snowballs 
to the Eskimos or sell sand to the desert Arabs. These are the best salespeople. Because common sense tells you uh, what Eskimo who's living in the middle of snow would go and buy a snowball. What Arab who's living in the middle of sand would go and buy sand. But if you're able to get him to buy sand, feel that he needs to buy your sand, then you are the best salesman. How are you going to do that? You have to deceive him. You have to deceive him. It's as simple as that. So much of marketing is focused around how to deceive the customer. To make that product desirable, where the customer wasn't even thinking about the product. But you made them feel that they must have this product. Their life is incomplete unless they get this product. This is much of advertisement. All kinds of tricks, etc., working on your, you know, your psyche, your, your mind. It's unfortunate. When we look at the history of the spread of Islam, so much of Islam was spread by traders. Though in the attack on Islam, people like to say Islam was spread with the sword. Muslim armies fighting, killing, capturing, etc. No, that's not true at all. The vast majority of what is known as the Muslim world today never saw a Muslim soldier. It was not by military conquest. Most was by trade. For example, one big country today, one of the biggest Muslim countries in the world, Indonesia, never saw a single Muslim soldier come ashore. The traders who came out of Arabia, they came and they traded. They had been doing it for centuries, following the usual practices of deception and cheating, etc., with their products. One year came to the Indonesian people who were buying their products and selling them other things, and they changed. These traders were now telling their customers where there were faults in their product. This cloth or this whatever, you know, it's not so good, it has this, it has that. Customers were very surprised. Why? Indonesians were surprised. Why are you, gonna, why are you doing that? Because obviously you tell us that there's something not quite good with, about it and that your neighbor has a better product or whatever, so on and so. Then you're going to lose the sale. So why would you want to do that? So when the traders told them, well, it's our religion, said, so, what, you have another religion now? Say, so, yes, we changed our religion. Our, this new religion that we're following, it says that we're not supposed to cheat. We have to give you the fair amount for what you pay. So the Indonesians wanted to, well, what is this religion? Tell us about it. And from that, Islam spread through trading honestly. And that's what Islam calls to, honesty in business, that we don't cut corners, we don't cheat. We don't build products that have in them obsolescence inbuilt. One of the practices, common practices today, the automotive industry, for example, is that they sell you a car which, if you took that car apart and you sold the individual parts of the car, it would be three, four, five times the actual cost of the car that you paid. So the manufacturers, they make their biggest profits from spare parts. This is where the biggest profits come. Not to say they don't make profits when they sell you the car. They do. But they have lowered their profits. Because were they selling the car at its market value based on the high prices that they've put on the spare parts, it would be many times more expensive. But in order to get you to buy that car, they have brought the price down. So this is the trap. You are trapped. You've bought that car. And now the parts in the car 
are not built to last forever. Not built to last as long as it possibly can last. No. They will put a variety of parts in there, which are plastic or not steel, they're aluminum, they're weakened, whatever, in order that it would break down at a certain point. And they measure it. They have machines which test, you know, using that part back and forth, up and down, whatever. And they will know at what point it will wear out. And then they'll give you a warranty. This warranty or guarantee will run out when that part runs out. So up until that point, it will last for three years or it will last for five years, certain parts. It will work fine. But once five years is up, they've tested the part. They know once five years is up, it's going to break down. You now have to go and buy that part. This is all deception. This is all trickery. This is not giving people the value for what they're paying. And this is despised by God. And this is why Allah said, give full measure when you measure and weigh with an accurate balance. That is good and better in the end. It is good for you because your trade then becomes righteous. It's good for the society. The people will benefit from what you're producing. And they're not cheated. And in the end, it will be added to your scale of good deeds and may help you to go to paradise, to be successful in the life to come. So your business, when you are honest and you're dealing in this way, from the Muslim perspective, your business, your trade is worship of God. It's considered ibadah, an act of worship. When you do it in a way which has been prescribed by God. So the best business is the honest business. That we deal with each other in the marketplace in honesty. And with that, we're going to take a short break. And I will see you after the break. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. I'd like to welcome you back to our episode of the best in Islam with regards to business. This is the main theme of this episode. Previous segment, we were looking at the mode of business transaction and we quoted the verse from Surah Al-Isra in which Allah had said, give full measure when you measure and weigh with an accurate balance. In another verse, in Surah Al-Jumu'ah, that's the 62nd surah or chapter, verse 9, Allah says there, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, idha nudiya lissalati min yawm al-jumu'ati, fas'aw ila dhikrillah, wadharu al-bay'ah, thalikum khayrul lakum, in kuntum ta'lamun. O believers, when the call for prayer is made on Friday, come to the remembrance of Allah and stop doing business. That is better for you, if only you knew. So this element of remembrance of Allah, which we spoke about in previous episodes, about the importance of good coming from the remembrance of Allah. Allah tells us on Friday, this is a day for our communal congregational prayer. On that day, at the time of the midday prayer, stop your business and go and pray. It is better for you. Better in that you will be reminded of Allah, of goodness and righteousness, so that when you go back to your work, you will be more conscious, more aware, seeking what is better, what is good. This is the purpose of the prayer, ultimately. And we spoke about that in previous segments. So 
We said earlier that one who does his or her business in a way which is in keeping with the teachings of Islam, then it means that that business itself becomes worship of Allah. One form of worship of Allah. But there is the actual prescribed formal worship at set times in the day. And on Friday in particular, that time should not be abused by avoidance of prayer because of worldly gain. So Allah tells the believers that when the call for prayer is given, stop. Stop your trade. Now this is not the whole day. Friday is not a holiday if people decide to stop businesses in general, the general flow of business, and give Friday as a break day in the week, we call it holiday, it's okay. Societies can do that. It's not a must. Because it's really only at the time of that midday prayer, which is now called on Friday, Salatul Jumu'ah, the Friday prayer. It is only at that time that they are commanded to give up all business, shut down their businesses and attend. Of course, they're encouraged if the prayer for Asr comes, the prayer for Maghrib comes, that they do likewise. Allah doesn't speak about those in the Quran, but we know that when the time for prayer comes, everybody should. But there may be circumstances wherein a business person, etc., may be involved in certain deals or whatever, and it may delay them, you know. They're not obliged to stop in the middle of it and go and pray immediately. For Friday, yes. For the other prayers, they're encouraged to wind up their business and go and pray. But if they were delayed, for example, it's possible they can delay their prayer, prayer later, because we have a period of time in which the prayer can be done. The midday prayer can be prayed from the middle of the day all the way till the afternoon. Two hours, three hours. Some countries, four hours. So the prayer can be done at any time in that period. Allah doesn't say this. Stop the business when the adhan for Asr comes, when the adhan for Maghrib comes, when the adhan for Isha comes. He doesn't say this. But he says for Friday. Why? Because Friday prayer is only at that time. The Juma. If you don't join that Friday prayer, you have missed the prayer. There is no prayer. Otherwise, you may have to do a midday prayer, which can replace it, but you don't get the reward for the Friday prayer. Once you miss it, you've missed it. And the reward is far greater than that of a regular midday prayer. So Allah tells us that our concern for worship, worship of Allah, should be foremost in our minds. Worshiping Allah by obeying Him with regards to our business. We should know what is involved in the business, what we are selling, we should sell it fairly, we should not cheat our customers. In that way, then our practice of business will be blessed and we will be among the best of the business people in the world, in the sight of God. We may not be the best in the sense of profits, our profits will be less because we're not cheating people. Our profits will be less because we do close our business when the time for prayer comes, so we lose out certain opportunities. But we know ultimately that we will be successful in both this life and the next. Our business will be added to our scale of good deeds 
when we are honest and fair and we remember Allah in the course of our business. So we have in this episode looked at two basic concepts from the Quran which address business. On one hand that we be fair and just when we are selling our goods. We give people value for money. If there is defects in our product, we inform the people. We don't cover it over, sell it to them, and trick them. We give them the best that we can. We should have and make the best product. As the Prophet quoted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Inna Allah yuhibbu min ahadikum idha amila amalan an yutqina. Allah loves from each and every one of you. Whenever you do anything, you do it to the best of your ability. So you're making shoes, or you're making cars, you're making beds, whatever you're making, you should do it the best you can. Not do it with the minimum of effort because you want to produce more. So if you don't do it the best, Instead of making only one, you will be able to make 10. So if you sell 10, you will make 10 times the money you would make for one. But Islam encourages us to do the best. Our customers will be our customers for life. They will know that we are honest and we have tried to give them the best. They will be loyal customers because we have sought to do the best and to be as fair as we possibly can. And we also are called to remember that prayer is more important than anything else. In particular, the Friday prayer, we have no choice. We must stop our business. Once that call to prayer comes, we have to close it and go and pray. The rest of the week, we are encouraged to close the business and go and pray. Because ultimately, the prayer is to make us better business people. Know that Allah's blessing will be on our business if we have conducted it in this manner. And with that, we're going to close this episode, this episode on business, whose contents are not complete. We do have some more guidance from Revelation with regards to the best in business. But for now, we're stopping and we hope to see you in our coming episodes in which we will continue to look at goodness in business. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Season comes and yellow. Season.